Ya ho, minasan konnichiwa, ini des. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I will be sharing with you how I apply to APU as an international student. Thank you Aaron Martinez so much for requesting this video. If you want me to make any videos about its male APU, about studying in Japan as an international student, please feel free to comment down below. So if you're watching this video, probably you are aspiring to go to Ritsumeikan APU or maybe going uh, study abroad in Japan. And hopefully this video will help you get some insights um, reflecting back on my experience of how I applied to school here three, four years ago. And on that note, I really want to put a disclaimer out there that I am just purely a student who has been through a process before. And today, I just want to share with you my true story when I applied. Well, almost four years has passed since I applied. So indubitably, a lot of things have been changed in the application system. There might be some news that I am not currently up to date with. However, I will try my best to explain it and try to give you the most comprehensive video you can about APU. So let's get to it. Hajimemashou. So before we get down to the nitty and gritty part of this video, let me introduce a bit about my background. Hello, my name is Annie. I am currently a fourth year student at APU. My major is marketing, which means I am in the College of Asia Pacific Management. I was born and raised in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. So that makes me completely an international student. I enrolled in APU in spring 2018. I received 80% was it 80%? 80% scholarship re tuition reduction. That's a hard word to say. Tuition reduction scholarship for my four years at APU. I applied as an SMO student, which was strategic management and organization. But then after coming here, I later changed my major into marketing. I applied to three universities, APU, ICU, and Waseda. And I got into all of them. So shout out to my younger self. I was also planning on applying to KOSFC campus under the GIGA program, which was Governance Information and Governance Academic Program, which was a completely different story of why I chose it. But for this video specifically, I'm gonna be focusing on APU. Also, I will be sharing my story when I apply as a first year student. If you are thinking of going to APU as a transfer student and you want to know the details, maybe comment comment down below what kind of questions you might have and I will try my best to answer it or I'm gonna ask my friends and I'm gonna help you out okay also I will be skipping general information such as application credibility or the minimum English or Japanese score required because those information you can find at the website okay so I guess we can get down to business now <laughs> So regarding the application process, let's divide it into two stages, stage one and stage two. Stage one is the application process and stage two is the interview. So for the application process, first and foremost, I want you to help me answer this. Is there an APU office in your country? This is super duper important because if there is an APU office in your country, it's going to help you out so much for your application process. The role of these offices is to help you apply to APU in the most efficient, productive, and complete way. So they help you prepare for the documents required, um, your academic transcript, your financial statement, your application form. They organize events and stuff like that. And they also help you retrieve the COE, which is a certificate of eligibility. If there's an office in your country, feel free to reach out and ask for help. They are here for you and they want you to be in your best shape when applying. So, uh, utilize these resources just in case you're from a country where they don't currently have an APU office don't worry because you can still do it on your own and that's why I'm here <laughs> to help you explain the process okay so next is when to apply so in APU there are two semesters that you can enroll in spring semester and fall semester 
Therefore, there will be applications throughout the year. So many different times you can apply for depending on which semester you want to enroll in. However, if you are an international student from countries like Vietnam, Indonesia, or Thai, there may be specific deadlines for you. So I highly recommend you to check with your office. In general, universities like Japan have their own websites and their own student portals. So in order to apply, you first need to make an account on those school's website. So for APU, when apply, you need to create an account on APU online application system. So just sign up through the portal and please, please, please remember your ID and your password because you'll never know when you need it again and it may become incredibly important even during the process or after. So after you signed up, I want you to answer this question. Are you applying for the tuition reduction scholarship? One of the reasons that made APU such an attractive university is that it offers international students tuition reduction scholarship for the four years at APU. There are many percentage of the scholarship and all you have to do is write an extra question in your application form. From experience, a lot of international students apply for it and I feel like it's a good opportunity to challenge yourself and there's no harm in doing it so why not? Also, I heard that there's like a limited amount of scholarship available but I feel like the earlier you apply, the higher the chances that you might get it. So, gambate. So for the application process, you need to submit basic information like your high school academic transcript, your English proficiency test score, or maybe Japanese if you have one, that's always a big plus. I think I use my JLPT N3. Also, you need to answer the application form, which includes five questions if you're applying for the tuition scholarship as well. The questions for the application probably change every now and then, but the core values are the same. They want to know who you are as a person, what are your personalities, and how you are able to show them through your past activities, and also what are your plans when you apply to APU, what are your plans when you are here, who you want to be um, after you graduate. Those kind of very standard questions. What do Japanese university look in applicants? I feel like this is a very subjective question, but I believe that they want to see how you interpret what you have done. You can choose to write a very big achievement that you're so proud of, or it can also be the smallest things in life, but you have put your effort and you continue to do it for a long period of time. They're more interested in how you did it and why you chose to do it. So maybe you participated in a big competition and won the reward, but maybe you can dig deeper why you started to do competitions in the first place or what kind of emotions or feelings you can achieve during you do it and after you do it and why you keep on doing it. I also know a senpai who wrote about his experience of going to church since he was like five and he still continued to do it when he applied to APU. He also expressed his interest in continuing it after entering APU. I believe that the factual content will affect your application, but it's more about how you reason yourself and how you express what kind of person you are, what personality you have through your application. I would highly recommend you to keep it simple and try your best to put your personality into the application form. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a part where you have to ask your teachers for a recommendation letter. When I applied, I think I had to ask for three recommendation letters. I personally believe the person who writes your recommendation letter has a very big influence on um, who you present yourself as an applicant. So I would recommend a person or people who know you very best, not through just your results, but through your attitude when you did that certain activity and understand what makes you stand out among your friends or your colleagues. When I applied, I asked for three recommendation letters. Um, the first one I asked, not the, not the principal, but the person who was in charge of the English department because I excelled in English, I would say. English is my one of my stronger points. And the second person, I asked my psychology teacher um, because I did psychology in my high school and my psychology teacher at the time really inspired me to look at the world from different perspective, to see people for who they are, to be inspired by the everyday things. And I think I put the most effort in his class 
so i believe that my efforts and also my results kind of touch him and so i hope he would write me a very true and authentic uh, recommendation letter and the last person i asked was a japanese professor i was a part of his research project when he did his project in vietnam and i just felt like i grew a lot when i before i met him and after i met him and i showed a lot of efforts in improving myself and i thought that he knew me best of what i am able to do and my potentials for the future so that's why i asked him so i would say that it doesn't have to be your teacher maybe your mentor or maybe your boss anyone is fine as long as they can recommend you and as long as they can highlighting your personality and your skills and your values and i think it should probably be good to go a tip i would give is that if the person who writes your recommendation letter can highlight the qualities or the personalities or the key values that you emphasize in your application it would definitely make your application form more coherent and therefore it would have this consistency and would make you stand out a bit more it's actually a very long process and i can't possibly go into details everything in one video so this is more like the general video if you want to learn about my application journey please comment down below and specifically what do you want to know my essays my creds or my eligibility what i did in high school the more specific stuff like that please comment down below so apparently in recent years there's this new additional thing being added to the process so it seems like you are requested to take an online assessment um in addition to application form i haven't done this before but i know some kohai who have done it so if you want to know more specifically what was included in it please comment down below and I'll try my best to reach out and ask just by looking at it probably the purpose of this test is to give a more fair and objective evaluation of your academic performance probably it's going to test your critical thinking or your problem solving skills there's probably mock tests somewhere out there online i'm pretty sure you can always practice and study for it before taking the real one and that's it for the first stage that is a lot to cover uh, submitting the, the documents, answering the form, pay the fee, <laughs> pay the application fee, and doing the online assessments. That's a lot to do, so make sure you write down the deadlines and always prepare in advance. Okay, moving on to stage two. After you submit your documents and you hear back from the office, which maybe take like four weeks, you will then receive the invitation to sit an interview with a PU. I was so stressed out about having an interview. Don't sweat it. Before, if you're from countries like Vietnam or Indonesia, probably the professor will fly from APU to your um, APU office in your home country. But because of COVID, everything is being done online. Structure-wise, I believe that it should be from 20 minutes to 25 minutes. The purpose of having the interview is to confirm if you are the same person as who you wrote in your um, application form, your intention of studying in Japan, what you plan on studying, and also maybe your future. It would definitely depend on the teacher and the questions may vary, but as long as you are confident, as long as you prepare, it should be okay. So after the interview round, maybe you have to wait for a couple of weeks later and then you will receive the email from the office whether you pass or not. And if you apply for the tuition reduction, it will also show you the percentage of how much you're getting after receiving the results it's then up to you now do you want to go to apu do you want to accept the offer and come to japan you have to make a decision and there's a deadline for it whether whatever your choice is um just make it before the deadline i know some people who are still not quite satisfied with the results they got so sometimes they take a break go on a gap year and then apply again next semester or next year which is totally okay the choice is yours so do what you find best for yourself and do that before the deadline if you did decide to accept it next is regarding student visa and buying plane tickets if APU office is located in your country they're going to help you so much with this process and it's gonna save you so much time you just need to apply via the office and they're gonna help you obtain your doe in some cases they will also help you rearrange the date for booking your ticket because in many countries all of 
the people entering the same semester, they might go together. So it's kind of like a group entering university together. So it's quite fun. If you're applying by yourself, just make sure that you go onto the student portal and follow the steps. They will outline all of the things that you need to do, like the checklist of what you need to submit and what you need to get so that you are always on track and you know where you're going. And that is it. I hope I didn't miss any information, but basically that was the process to apply to APU as a foreign student. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I feel like there was a lot of points that I could not specify or I could not go into details because it will make this video very, very long and I couldn't get very personal with it. So if you want an up close and personal video about my experience, comment down below because I take video requests and I'd be more than happy to help you answer any of your concerns or any of your worries about applying to Japan or applying to APU. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for sitting through all the way to the very end. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. I post about university tips and mindsets, and I hope that I can help you maximize your time in college. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I really want to say I'm very sorry that I cannot constantly release video because recently I've been starting my job hunting process, so things might get kind of busy at times, but your support to this channel and to my social media really really motivate me to make more videos thank you so much for your ongoing support and i will see you next time hopefully soon bye